solving shit at the pilot. it on. Niggas be broke and be solving, but still talking shit like they violent. Niggas is broke. LeBron James, a three time champion, a four time MVP, and one of the best to ever do it. He has publicly said that he is chasing the ghost of number 23, the one that used to play for the Chicago Bulls, the one that won six championships, six finals MVPs, and six NBA finals appearances, the one with five most valuable player awards. That guy. That is the ghost LeBron is chasing. And it's getting harder by the day. And the latest blow to that journey is his last NBA Finals appearance where he lost to the Warriors in five, making his finals record three and five. It was bad enough that people don't consider him the GOAT solely because he wasn't perfect like MJ, but now he's not only one finals appearance below 500, but two finals appearances under 500. Then shortly after the finals came the rearmament of the Western Conference. Now at short glance, you'd think this would be a good thing for LeBron, more teams to challenge the Warriors and throw them out, or making them tired going into the finals, and that's still a possibility. But more often than not, the team that faces the most adversity before the finals is the one that goes crazy once they get there it, 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 it's sort of like how goku being pushed to the edge made him go super saiyan against frieza it's sort of like that a prime example are the 2011 Mavs, a team that faced the back-to-back -back reigning champions in the lakers in the second round and a young but still extremely talented oklahoma city thunder in the western conference finals then when it came to the finals it just looked like no one was gonna beat them, not even LeBron and the Heat. And even the year after, the Heat faced some adversity with the Pacers, who we all remember back then gave LeBron a lot of trouble, or at least more than the average. Then they went to seven games against Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals, and we all remember game six of that series. I'm still trying to forget it. <laughs> then after, when he got to the finals, it seemed like no one was stopping the Heat and LeBron, and they beat the Thunder in five games. And again, the year after, the team that faced the most adversity, the Heat, who went to seven games against the Pacers, won again in the finals. We can even go back all the way to 2008, where the Celtics, who had a seven game series for the first two rounds, and a road that had them beating the two teams that made the Eastern Conference Finals the year before, while the Lakers only had one series go to six games prior to the NBA Finals. Now, this isn't always the case. I think in 09, the Magic had just as tough as a road as LA. In 2007, the Spurs were just a far superior team to the Cavs. And in 2016, the Warriors easily had a tougher road than the Cavs going into the Finals playing the whole first round without the unanimous MVP, playing the second round without him as well in the first three games, then having to come back from 3-1 against the Thunder in the Western Conference Finals, while the Cavs only lost two games prior to the Finals. But the Cavs still won that one. So there are some outliers. However, the point is, just more often than not, adversity brings out the best in a team. And while there's less adversity in the East more than ever, the West arguably has the most adversity it's ever had. And the Warriors are coming back with better chemistry. And if they make it out of this West, and based on the pattern I just described, this may not be a good sign for LeBron and the Cavs. And not only did the West get stronger, which I, I just explained may be a bad thing, but the Cavs, to me, are the weakest they've been since LeBron got there. And I'm sorry, but tell me if I'm wrong, but the Celtics have the potential to be the best team LeBron has faced since he came back, while at the same time, the Cavaliers' only move this summer so far seems to be Jose Calderon. And I know I just said the team who faces the most adversity typically comes out the winner. And I know I just said that LeBron might be facing the best team he's seen since 2014 in this conference. But let's be clear. I said the team that faces the most adversity. And although Boston's coming in, Golden State would still have the most adversity from round one to the finals. But at the same time, you potentially have the best team LeBron has ever faced in the conference in the last three years face him while the Cavs are at their weakest. And I say all of this to prove the point that by the day, the road for LeBron surpassing MJ or even meeting him is getting rougher and rougher and harder to cross if nothing changes for him and his mentality is basically, just let me have another bite at the apple. But the key phrase in what I just said is, if nothing changes. 
And I think that is the key for LeBron to win another championship in the later part of his career. And I know what you're saying. Duh. <laughs> Obviously something has to change. And that's why they were trying to get Paul George. That's not even what I mean. What I mean is LeBron as a basketball player has to change. Because I think the problem with LeBron as we speak is to build a team around LeBron. You have to basically think of it as the ultimate one man team with a supporting cast that makes him the most effective. We always say, imagine Kyle Korver now that he's with LeBron. Imagine Channing Frye now that he's with LeBron, JR, Iman, etc, etc. But what we fail to realize is in that system, LeBron has to do everything. And I mean everything score pass rebound coach and even something simple as simply being in the game if lebron even has the slightest off night the whole team collapses which explained game three in the eastern conference finals and the fourth quarter of game three in the nba finals the team becomes way too dependent on lebron and when you have a team like the warriors who have anything and everything you'd want to throw at lebron it becomes easy to break that one man team but let's say he switches it up and becomes primarily a scorer. I feel like he'd become even more dominant in my opinion, which doesn't seem to make sense at first glance. But as the old saying goes, sometimes less is more. Because again, in this system, everything revolves around LeBron, meaning that if you stop LeBron, or if you at least cancel him out and make it his supporting cast versus yours, like the Warriors did last season by adding KD, you win probably seven times out of 10. And by him being a pure scorer, I just feel like the wealth would be better distributed throughout the whole team. Kyrie gets more touches, potentially growing his playmaking ability while also making him more of a threat. Kevin Love becomes less of a catch and shoot big and more of a post presence or at least more of a pick and roll big instead of solely just being a catch and shoot big, which most of the time, that's what I see Kevin Love doing. That's the role he's playing. And I think this makes building around LeBron so much easier if he's just primarily a scorer because this opens up more role player options like Jose Calderon or Boris Diaw who are more pass oriented which wouldn't be as effective in a LeBron handles the ball all the time and makes all the passes system. But I think they'd be more effective in a system where LeBron is just primarily a scorer or more of a score than he is right now. And let's not even look at how the team would be structured and all. Let's just look at LeBron's most dominant games. Remember LeBron's greatest game? Game six of the Eastern Conference Finals in 2012? He only had five assists. Remember when LeBron dropped 25 straight points on the Pistons? He did have seven assists, but that's the LeBron I'm talking about. Remember when LeBron dropped this game winner on the Magic? Gets it to LeBron for three for the win. Yes! LeBron James at the buzzer! He only had five assists in that game. I don't even remember this, but when LeBron dropped a career-high 49 against the Nets in the 2014 playoffs, he only had two assists, and they came out with a dub. And just look at the last couple of minutes of Game 5 in the finals this year. You're telling me LeBron couldn't just keep on doing that? and score almost every time instead of trying to deliberately get everyone else involved because I'm, I'm sorry man this is just personal preference but i'd personally take my chances with lebron going to the rim contested then i'll open iman shumper three I, i'm sorry that's just that's just my belief look i'm not asking lebron to just go full-on mellow and only average four assists only once in his career i'm not i'm not asking that i'm just saying maybe tone down the assists from seven to eight to five or six and up the points to 28 to 32 which i really think he's still capable of doing and i'm not saying this just for next year i'm saying this for the rest of his career he needs to change so his team would also change with him for the better and almost all the greats have done this in the latter part of their career they all changed the game and found a little more success than just trying to stay the same look at kobe Early on, it was all about beating someone off the dribble with his handles and his athleticism, and it did work. 
but then later on, he became more dependent on his post game and his moves became more simple but effective. And he won two more championships. Jordan in the early part of his career was a guy who could average 33, 8, and 8, and like LeBron was trying to do it all. But as he aged in the late 90s, the assists went down, the athleticism went down, but the skill went up and he bought into the system more and won three more championships. Hell, you could even say the start of the 91 when he won his first championship. And we can even go as far back as Wilt Chamberlain. The man was averaging 50 a game with two assists, not winning any championships. But the first season, he averaged seven plus assists. He won his first championship. But on a side note, I do believe that was the first year after Bill Russell's retirement, so that could have still played a factor. But nonetheless, Wilt changed his game and he won a championship. We can even go to Shaq. He went from being Mr. Running and Jumping and being the best athlete when he was with the Magic to basically just being the most dominant and unstoppable paint player of all time through his size, and that got him a three-peat. And to me, I just think it's time for LeBron to change his game like the other greats did. Not only for this year, but for the rest of his career, because while their time is catching up, LeBron, it's up to you to adjust your game accordingly. But with that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and I am out. Peace.